It's millions. In, I know. It's just sitting there. I totally what are they know. using it for? I don't know. I don't know. I gotta see if I can go use this um, for the yum. I totally think so. I mean, they could be in there anyway, but I just don't know. I think that'd be a great idea. And then you all could just kind of like openly chat. Could I? Um, is anybody using that room? Oh, okay. What is that? Whose office is that? Oh, yeah. She's about to give her a... She's going to have a heart attack. Are you, are you leaving this, Sabrina? No. Are they assigned another person for another office? Here in the office. Yeah, she's getting a pr promo. Promotion. So what's Amy doing? She's assistant team leader. Right. Watch, what? keep up with. <laughs> <laughs> Is somebody in that room? No, ma'am. Oh, can I use it in there? I just need it for yes. like 10, 15 minutes. Yes. I just need to write on a wall. And you can go. Yeah, it, the lady's not showed up. She's at 2 o'clock. Well, it's only 2 right now. You think she will? I'd rather have a small room. Right. Oh, I love that that's playing on there. I love that to play on there. Um, just Man, she's smart. Hey, Sheila. Hi. How are you, girl? Good. I can't see you. Can you see me? Oh, yeah, I can see you. Wait a minute. Start video? No, I... Yeah, start uh, video. Oh, there you are. Oh, there I am. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so which one can I go in? Sorry, I'm trying to find a room. Hold on. I can go in here if you want. Are you sure? Okay. Okay, thanks. It won't take me very long. Thank you. I'm trying to find a room I can write on a wall. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, I'm trying to see. Like, I'm wondering if I write, if you can see. Like, will you be able to see right here? Yeah. Okay. So. Perfect. Okay, let me pull it up. Hold on one second. Okay. Because I've got. Oh, I got it. Okay, I emailed you a copy of the economic manual. Yeah, and you know what? I tried to. Let me try again because I tried to. I want to. Oh shoot. I tried to open it. Oh great! I've got a notebook with no paper left in it. We could just make it like an actual recruiting. I won't even set it up. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. Ooh. I'm just gonna record this. I'm recording it for you. Oh, you are just the best. I'm recording oh. it for you. I thought that that would be better for you. Yes, yes, I need stuff recorded that I can just listen okay. to. I gotta get a clean piece of paper. Oh, I use recycled paper for my copies that I end up throwing. Oh, I see that too. That's so funny. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> I know. It's like, oh, all right. Let me get a real piece of paper yeah. so I can punch holes in it and then put it in my little Dana notebook. Oh, this has sparklies on it. All right. Model. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay. It's okay if you don't have it in front of you because I can. Um, okay. We can just kind of. Okay, so normally what I would do is like we'd be in the recruiting appointment and I would just like, I would say, and sometimes I would use this to actually get them there mm -hmm. by saying, um, I have, I have a, um, a tool I'd really love to use with you and um, talk about your business, you know, your goals, whatever, whatever. I can send you some of those original scripts, but then when you actually get them in, oh, that's being wobbly. Oh, part something on the table. When you actually get them in, then I would say, okay, I would love for us to break down and talk about how much money do you actually want to make next year uh, or this year, whatever the time is, and then we can break it all the way down to really analyze your business to see even how many appointments you need to go on, how much you need to close, how many units, how many volume, how much volume, um, so that it's very simple. And I always say, um, before when I was at Remax, I had never seen anything like this before. So this to me is like super. Um, it's just a simple way of being able to know exactly what you need to do for your business, regardless of if you ever come to Keller Williams. I feel like this will help you. And they're like, okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. so I just bring out the sheet and like we work through it and fill it out together and it doesn't really take that long. So um, I'm going to write it on the wall so that you can see it. But typically I would just like the sheet that I sent you, I would print it out and have it work. And then you start with number one and that is, actually let me just move this up so you'll be able to see it better. 
I'll start with number one and then I just say, okay, so let's talk about how much, what income do you want to take home before taxes next year? And so for like simple math, let's just say that they said a hundred thousand dollars. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then in space number one, you put their goal that they want to make um, at, b before taxes, but after expenses. Okay. So whatever number they have, you would put in the blank spot for number one. Then you move down to number two, which says their gross closed income, so their GCI. So this is to know how much they're going to have to make because then they're going to have expenses. On this, okay. year, it already gives you a breakdown. Okay. So they want to net 100000 It would be 55% of that. So times that by 0.55. So then we know that their GCI would need to be 155 because number three is their expenses, and that's just two minus one, because their expenses are gonna be 55,000. So if they wanna make 100,000 take home, then they need to gross 155, because they're gonna have 55 of expenses. And a lot of times people will ask, well, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna spend 55 on expenses. Well, this is gonna be part of their cap. They have to think about two. So if their cap is, like ours is 18,000 here. So, mm -hmm. so plus the three, that's 21. So 21,000 of that 55 is going to be their cap. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Ours is 25. So, so the other, when you're saying expenses, you're talking about marketing, legion, advertising, signs, um, mm -hmm just all the expenses that they would have as an agent, basically. So like, but, but they get less for the more income that you have. So like on this, it tells you on the economic worksheet. So if they wanted to make 250,000, if that was what they wanted to take home, oopsie, hold on, 250,000, then you would times that by 0.5, 50% instead of 55% for the 100,000. So like if they were gonna say, we wanna make 250,000, um, we want to take home before taxes, then you would times that by 0.50 because the, the um, percentages change. And okay. that's going to mean that their expenses would be 125. So their GCI that they would have to have would be 375 because they're going to have 125 in expenses. Okay. Um, would be the 250. So you're basically just working backwards from whatever amount that they tell you that they want to make. Okay, so you use the point if it's if it's under 250,000, you use the point 55. Yes. For expenses, so minus out. So even you know, like for somebody who doesn't have, so this would be for like the basic agent that doesn't have a team or. This is just, no, this, can, this can just be for any agent, even if they have a team, this is just their, like what they want to take home. Okay. So yes. I would say gear more towards an, in, like a, a basic agent or okay. really, an individual agent, because even if someone said I want to, they're a brand new agent and they said, I want to make 50,000, then you would just cut that in half. So their expenses are going to be 22, five and they want to take home 50. So they're going to need to make 72, five. GCI. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's the first part to get what they want. Then you break it in half or you split, you get the sheet splits in half. The left side is for sellers and the right side is for buyers. It asks for a blank. And I always tell people like you want to really try to be realistic with what you put in this. If you know that you are really buyer heavy more than you are sellers, then you might be 60% buyers, 40% sellers. The average is gonna be split 50-50. Okay. So I tell people that, but I say, do you feel comfortable sticking with that 50% of your business as buyers and 50% as sellers? And mm -hmm. they'll say yes. Or if they're like, no, I work way more buyers, then I say, okay, we need to probably do, you know, how, what do you think the percentage is? And if they're like, oh, I work probably, and I always tell them to think about it, like it, out of tens, we're gonna do that. So if you had 10 closings, how many of those are going to be buyers and how many are going to be sellers? And if they said, oh, probably six are going to be buyers and four are going to be sellers, then I would say that you're probably 60% buyers and 40%. Okay. So, okay. So then what you do with that, if you truly split it 50-50, which is how it normally is, 
Line number four is you take the GCI. So number one is their net, what they want to take home. Number two is the GCI, and number three is the expenses. So then you come down here, and line number four is you split the GCI in half because they're 50% buyers and 50% sellers. Mm -hmm. If they weren't, you would do the math the other way. So if they we're going to keep it 50%, that would mean that they need 77,500 of their GCI to come from sellers and 77,500 to come from buyers. Okay. So you're basically just splitting that down the middle. Then number five is you divide it by their, their average commission. So we're going to say 3%, but you might want to tell them, well, actually divide it by 3%. You're going to tell them up front if you're a big discounter, um, or you do a lot of new construction, then yours might not be 3%. So mm -hmm. like the average is probably 2.6-ish. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're usually going to know. But most people nowadays, they get more towards three. So then you take 77, um, and it walks you through it on the worksheet, 77,500 divided by 3%. Oopsie. Oops. And that gives them 2,583, gosh, I should have this memorized, but I don't, 583,333, both sides, because we did 50-50. So what this is, is this is the volume that, the average volume of what they need to close, mm -hmm. the gross 155. So I usually come over on the side and just say equals, because they need to know that to take home $100,000, and this is always spot on, they need to be somewhere right around the five million mark. Oh, okay. In production. So they need to do okay. two and a half million for sellers and two and a half million for buyers. Okay, okay. So if somebody says to me, at what volume do I need to get to make $100,000? Like this is the easiest way to do that because it's always, I always know it's right around five million if they're not a discounter. So then you move down to line number seven. And then what you do is you divide this number by your average sales price. So if they don't, if they know their average sales price, I would put it in. If they don't know their average sales price, I would take yours, like your all. Okay. Price. Um, do you know what your all's is? It's like 208, so just use 200. Okay, perfect, that's what I was gonna say. So then we would divide it by 200,000 on both sides. And that gets us number eight, which is 12.9. So we're going to say 13. Oh, okay. So basically what that is, is that this number is how many transactions they need. So I can look at this and say, if you want to make 100,000 and your average position is 3% and your average sales price is 200,000, you need to plan on doing roughly 26 units to equal about 5 million in production. Okay. Does that make sense? And slowly, yeah. if I need to, because sometimes you, and like when you work this, like if you would do this with like a couple of your top 20% of people in your office, after you do it, you know, two or three or four times, you're going to be like, this is, because it's so similar. It's pretty much the same thing. So then you actually break down into how many appointments they need to go on. So number nine is you want to divide by the percentage of your, um, and this is where, Sheila, a lot of times what I do is 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. I'll move the screen down. 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. These are going to be different. Like usually after number eight is where you'll separate and you'll do this all the seller first and then you'll do all the buyers and you'll see why. Okay. So, okay. So right now, let me move that down so you can see it a little bit better. Okay. So right now, we're going to go to the seller side. So number nine is your seller transaction conversion rate. So people get hung up on the difference between number nine and number 11. Number nine is your seller transaction conversion rate. Number 11 is your appointment conversion rate. So you can think about number nine this way, um, and you're kind of working backwards. But so for sellers first, if you had 10 properties go under contract, how many out of that 10 are actually going to make it to the closing table? The average okay. is right around 75%. So a oh. person might say, and I ask them, like I'll tell them what the average is, but I'll say, what do you think yours is? Out of 10 pendings, how many go to closing? And they might say 
eight or nine, you know, whatever. So, but we're going to actually, let's just use 80%. We're going to say 80%. So then what you do is then you take number eight, um, I'm sorry, line number eight, which is 13, and you divide that by 80% and you get 16. So then you drop down to number 11, and this is the appointments. So this is different because you're saying if you went on 10 listing appointments, because we're talking about the sellers now, if you went on 10 listing appointments, how many do you think you're going to get? And they might say seven out of 10. So then you would put 70%. So then you take your 16 and divide that by 70% and you're at 23. So what this means is they need to go on 23 appointments to actually get 16. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. I lost. I, I tried to go down and I hit something. Hold on. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Um, go to the top right and hit speaker view. All right. And then you hit um, view. I just totally went off what we were on and went to. Wait a minute. Oh, oh. Um, oh, sign up. It's free. Oh, I went back to the. What did I do? Wait a minute. You couldn't have clicked it out. Oh, there you are. There you oh, are. Got it? Okay. Don't let me touch anything. <laughs> Put the paper. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. So okay. you, so what you do on this one, I'm trying to do it so you can kind of see the screen instead of me. So okay. what, what you do is, did you oh, get 23 appointments. appointments. Okay. Yeah. So if they said that out of 10 listing appointments that they're going to go on, they're going to get seven of them, then you put 70% in number 11. Okay. So what this means is they're going to have to go on 23 appointments to actually take 16 listings to actually close 13 of them. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. So then number line number 13, all you're doing there is dividing it by 12. So basically that, because that's 12 months in a year. So you're basically going to say two. So they need to know that they need to go on two listing appointments per month to be able to take 16 to close 13 at an average sales price of 200 and an average commission of 3%, and that would give them a GCI of 77,500. For, for the sellers. So this is kind of like the, pretty much like the GCI calculator on the computer when you pull it down in the growth tools, totally. but just on yep. a, do it on a Panera napkin. Yes, Basically. because like if I used to carry these sheets with me everywhere because it just gives them something that's like so easy. Actually, yeah, I got um, one of our recruits. I got um, Josh Baird is his name. He was for Richmond, but now he's in Lexington. He's like the number one individual agent in the greater Lexington office. And he grew his business because the first time I sat down with him, he said, I just need you to tell me if I want to make $200,000, what do I have to do? And I said, perfect. This is what you have to do. Let me show you the economic plan. And he's like, oh my gosh, no one's ever showed me this before. And so now that's like pretty much, I mean, that's, and he joined and then he's been, I don't know, he's been crushing it for the last three years. So it just gives somebody a plan. So if we're just going to finish it out, um, then we go, okay, then we say, okay, those were for your sellers. Now let's talk about your buyers. For every 10 buyers that you put under contract, how many do you think are actually going to close? Um, and they might say, um, you know, sometimes buyers are fall through more than sellers do. So they might say 770. So then you're going to do, oopsie, keep losing my calculator. Our 13 units times 0. 0.7 is 13. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, I'm just I'm dividing. Dang it, sorry. Um, that's 19. So they need to take 19 buyer clients uh, under contracts to actually get 13 closed. And then if they say, I say, how many buyer appointments do you go on? Do you actually get the buyers? And they probably will say 70. That's about the average. Then you're going to take that and divide it by 70. And that's 26 points. I say 27. So on the buy side, they need to go, they need to have 27 buyer um, appointments to actually put 19 of them under contract to actually close 13 of them. So if we take that and divide it by 12, it's still about two. So I would say, so for this, so if you want to make $100,000 before taxes take home, we need to get you going on four appointments per month. And okay. 
gosh, it just is like, and then when you as it breaks it down, it's like, yeah, you can't do that. And I literally, Sheila just did this in a mid-year business planning clinic in Richmond. And one of my cappers, I mean, she's in the, she's on the ALC. She probably does eight or nine million. She said, Dana, every time we do this, I think this is like the easiest thing. Why am I not doing this? And I'm like, I know. It's really just puts me back into perspective mm -hmm. of what it is. And mm -hmm. so then you, the great thing is once you've done, and if they say they don't know how much, like I would just put a hundred because then I always tell people, so the great thing is 100 is such an even number that you can just do quickly do the math. So if you say next year you want to double and make 200,000, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. That's great. You're going to need to know that you're going to need to do about 10 million, about 52 units, and you need to go on eight appointments a month to make, to take home 200,000. You know, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's it. So with ours, okay, so for 100,000, I would do, um, since our cap is 22, so it's yep. 25 total. So I would subtract that. And then what are you using as the basis for? Um, um, no, you don't need to, um, let me show you the sheet. You don't need to subtract the cap. It's already in there. So, oh, the cap's in there. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. Can you see the sheet now? I can, and for some reason, well, you know what, I think I looked at it on my phone, and maybe I, so I'll make sure I can print it out if I can't. Um, I'll, uh, I can reshare it to you, but okay, see, see where it says on here, hold on, I'm trying to make it, well, well, that's not, okay, there, where it says on here, like, you put your net, which is what we did for number one, then to, oh, okay. then to get your GCI, it tells you, so if it's, if they want to make 100,000, you times it by 0.55, if it's 250,000, 0.5. And then for a million or more, or 500, I'm sorry, for 500 or a million, you go 0. 0.416. So if let's just say they said they wanted to make 150,000, you're still mm -hmm. going to use that 0. 0.55 until any, whatever, and use these numbers until you get to that next. So anything up until 250, you would times it by 0. 0.55. Oh, okay. So, so no matter how much your cap is, it's, yes. it's, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so. But just looking at it, I know if I'm looking at it and I'm like kind of a, a new agent and I'm going, oh, so 55%, so 55,000 in marketing, so take 25,000 out of that, that leaves, um, what, like 30,000 in expenses. So you're looking at like over a thousand a month in expenses. So uh, this is what I would typically say to them. I would say, now this is, we're, we're going to always err on the... Um, stop sharing my screen. We're going to always err on the cautious side. So mm -hmm. this is going to be a little on the higher side. This is what the average agent um, who has become a millionaire in Keller Williams, this is what, this is the plan that they have followed to get there. You might okay. not spend that much and that's totally, you know, I mean, that doesn't mean you have to go out and spend this. This is just to like, if you were going to follow the model and the budget model exactly, that's how much that you would spend. Okay. So let's err on the caution side of saying if you spent thirty thousand in expenses, because some people are going to start writing off their car. Some people are going to then they have their board dues, they have the trainings they go to, they have any marketing, their signs. You know what I mean? They're I mean it can mm -hmm. add up. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I would just say you know that's kind of that doesn't mean that's what you have to do. It's just we want to err on the higher side because things can start adding up depending on what you're going to classify as an expense now that you're mm -hmm. ten ninety nine you know. Oh, okay. 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 So what they're going to subtract as an expense. Okay. Their cell phone bill. Um, oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you add all that stuff up, I mean, they're probably going to spend 30, they're probably, it's probably going to be close to $30,000 if mm -hmm. they're really trying to grow their business. I mean, you know what I mean? If they're really being, yeah. yeah. To grow their business. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I know, you know, some of the younger ones who are just or the newer agents trying to get it off the ground just to make ends meet. Yep. We're gonna, you know. Well, and remember, you would divide it by half. So most new agents that I've gotten, if I sat down and said, how much do you want to make this year before taxes? Most of them are going to say $50,000. That's usually like, okay. if, typically they, they're going to say either 50 or 100, but most newbies usually say 50. Yeah. So think about it that way that cuts it down to like their expenses are even half of that so they're at 15,000 for expenses. Oh okay gotcha yeah. So it's going to depend on how much money they really want to make that's why it always starts like with that net. Okay okay and so and you said that that is the net um 
before taxes, but after expenses. Correct. So their taxes are going to come out of that as so, well. And I always really try to explain that to them because a lot of people, especially, I mean, I was bad about this in the very beginning. You forget that you have to pay, you know what I mean? They'll forget they have to pay the taxes. They'll think that just because yeah. they have that money, that that's their money that they get to keep. So right. I, I remember, you know, you're going to, I take out 30%. You need to talk to your CPA and see what, you know, what bracket you need to be taking out of those. Because if, even if they want to net a hundred, then they're probably going to make six, 70, 65, depending on the tax bracket they're in. Yeah. Right. Right. So even with this, without this taken off um, to get the true, Oh, I just did it again. I touched it. Ah, here you are. Um, <laughs> I figured out how to go back now. It's a little camera at the bottom. Um, so if they wanted a true, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So really then their bring home is a hundred and you know, they're going to be, so it would, like you said, 60, 65 or whatever, depending yeah, on what their taxes are. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. the main purpose is what everybody wants to know, which is, um, usually they want to know what, how many units do they have to do? What's their mm -hmm. volume going to be and how many appointments do they have to mm -hmm. go on? So like when we get finished with this, if you were recruit, I would say, okay. So I usually switch markers. So I would say, okay, just so we're making sure that we're all clear, you want to take home $100,000. And in order to be able to do that, we know that you need to um, do right around 5 million, which is 26 units, which means we need to get you on four appointments a month. And they're like, yep, that's it. I mean, those are like the simple numbers that they really want to know. Okay. Okay. And I mean, it works every time. I mean, it's wow. people just want to get, they just want it to be broken down for them. Right. Now, do you ever use that GCI calculator? Did you say that you used to like take your... So uh, I'm going to be really honest. I did not use that for recruiting appointments because um, it was, I was trained to do it just on this. And this was, this is much yeah. better and easier for me. Um, uh -huh. When they inbound with us, our director of agent services sets them up and does their um, CGI. It does that for them. With them. Okay. Yeah. But at least this, they already had like a preset idea. And if you're meeting somebody at Starbucks or, you know, right. it's no. easier for me to do it this way. Yeah, yeah. No, that is because, you know, I don't always want to lug my laptop around anyway. I know. If they're coming into the office, you know, maybe I can see that it's a little bit different. But this is just always like, you know, one easy. I mean, I'm telling you, every recruiting appointment I did, I either did the economic model, the 36 touch, um, telling them about the 36 touch, or because those, the reason why I always stuck to those two things, Sheila, is because those are two things that whether they come with us or not, hopefully they will, but whether they do or they don't, I've provided them with some sort of value and it was just like the building of a relationship. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank yeah, I, I was. Whether they're with Keller Williams or whether they're at Caldwell Banker, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't really matter. This is, none of this is gonna change. Right, The 30 right you can hook them a little bit better because they're not going to have a systematic way or, you know, sh people to share their marketing with in the office to be able to hit those 36 touches is why I kind of, you know, really like to do that one too. So do you do, um, do you like do this for the first appointment and then the 36 touches like for the next or do you combine them with Jessica? You kind of combined it and I missed the last part. Yeah. Yeah. It really depends on how it's going. If I promise them that I'd only be with them for 30 minutes, then I, I know both of them. Like I have both of them ready to go. And I just usually say, okay, so if I could give you one piece of value today and you were to choose between a way to really grow and market your business through your database or an exact plan for how many appointments you would need to go on, how much units, how much closed volume to get to X amount, which one of those do you feel like would be more beneficial since I only promised, since I promised you we'd only be here for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. and I just let them pick. And that's the one that I do. A lot of times they're like, Oh, well, I kind of want to know both of them, you know? And I'm like, that's okay. Can you stay for 45? You know, well, let's just go through them. And if we end up going past 30, then I just want you to know, like, I want to be respectful of your time. And then like, that's kind of what happened with Jessica. Yeah. Right. 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 Okay. So, by the way, she didn't respond to my text. Okay. And I talked to her this morning. So, uh, she finally called me Good. and yeah, so she was checking. Let me see if she, she said, how oh, she goes, I'm working with my dad this week and I'm working and I didn't ask off work. I thought it was next week. And I'm like, you know, 
since I like sent her a million things, it was like, Jessica. So she was going to check and see if she was going to go. And then she said to me, and I want to re be respectful of your time too, because um, oh, it's almost 30. Uh, she said, um, well, she, and I said, and I said, plus we need to get together so that I can get you, you know, get you in here and in our system and, you know, and talk about your transition and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, I've done a lot of thinking and I think I want to stay with um, Comey until the end of the year. You know, I've got some things going on and some stuff that's going to be pending. And, and I said, and I, last time we were with each other, I had shown her, you know, I talked to her about cap management and 94% commission, you know, and how she would be able to get her car and, you know, everything. Yeah. And um, she's, I said, Jessica, I said, so you've got stuff coming up. I said, oh, cause she wants to make, um, the circle of excellence and be at that tier. And I said, all that stuff will count. And plus you will get there faster. Mm -hmm. And, um, she said, yeah, well, I, I, so I said, okay, look, let's please. And you were going to, and she was going to talk to Beth, who's like her sponsor. Okay, but, that would be my next thing was I would go back and have the person that originally got you with her to reach back out to her. Yeah. So she is. And so Beth's like been at the county fair anyway, and she's an instructor at Hondros and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so she, um, I'm going to have Beth do that. And, uh, but I did get Jessica committed to meet with me on Monday. I'm Good. like, you know what? let's go through the numbers again. And, um, so I think that but, with her again. Okay. Okay. For sure. Yes. Okay. All right. And then I would go through, I would have her write down every single thing that she thinks that she's going to have go pending in the next 60 days. That was something I used to always do too. Like I would say, okay, let's talk about your pipeline right now. Just like how we do with team leaders, but we're talking about it with them and their business. I would say, let's go through your pipeline. And I want you to write down every single thing that you potentially think that you have that could go pending that you'll put under contract in the next 60 days. And I'll be like, think, let's do the buyers first and then think about any listings. And then let's just ballpark hillbilly math guess and say about what do you think, you know, the sales price is going to be for each of those. And I would okay. have them down and then add it all up in times at a 3% commission to see what the commission would be on it. And then okay. have her do her split and then do 94%. And be like, so this is real money that you're that you're missing out on by you know continuing to stay there because you have so much in your pipeline. If you wait till the end of the year, you're going to be starting off the beginning of the year, kind of getting everything situated. And you know, we know you need 90 days to get rolling. And if we're starting you in January, and you don't really, you take 90 days to get acclimated and get rolling, you're still doing your business, but you're also getting calorized and drinking out of a fire hose then that puts us at the end of March, beginning of April, which is the busy time of the year. And we got to get you ready to roll before the busy time of the year so that you're like ready to hit it. And you've got a plan in place. You've got your 36 touch in place. You've got your database cleaned up and squared away. And then you're ready to roll. That's what I would always say to people when they would say, oh, I'm going to wait until the end of the year. Mm, that's good. Because you're like, oh, well, I mean, it's going to take you this, you know what I mean? Or otherwise you could come now crush what you've got about to come up and pending, make all that money at a hundred percent until we start your cap. And then you've got, you know, the slower months, November, December, January to really work on building your plan for next year. Then you're ready to mm -hmm. hit the ground running. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. She's just going to be one that needs a little more of a push. Yeah. I would keep Beth on her like a lot though. What's that? I would keep that. Um, was it Beth? Is that her name? Yes. Yes, Beth. Oh, Beth. Yeah, Beth, you said, okay, I will. Yeah, I will. keep her on it. Okay, okay. Awesome. Thank you. You were just kind of fast, but I mean, does this like, does that help? I mean, can you yes. rewatch? Re I'll send it to you right now after it downloads. Yeah. Watch it. Yeah, because, because I've got another meeting with a guy um, that I kind of, I did go through the um, 36 touch and, you know, we talked about Good. this a little bit. I want to go through this with him and I, I do want that worksheet. Okay, um, if you can't open that worksheet, then just text me or email me back and I'll, something's been wrong. Like when I attach something to my, um, from my Mac, it's for some reason, sometimes people can't open it, but I yeah. can send it to you through like the Gmail and it'll work better. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. okay. All right. Tomorrow. Okay. Oh, tomorrow. Oh, yeah, tomorrow. I'll cool. see ya. We're going to have the best day. It'll be really good. I know. I can't wait. I, I'm, uh, 
Yes. Okay. I'm debating whether to spend the night or not, or if Jessica's coming, I'm going to come back and then drive her okay. Wednesday. So, okay. okay. All right. Okay. Good morning. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, okay. Thank you. You're such a dear. I love you. Bye. Love you back. Bye. <laughs>